So this time Intel released two processor families for their laptops. One is Ice Lake, the new one, new architecture, new chips, uh, 10 nanometers. And the other one is Comet Lake, a slightly improved 14 nanometer old core that goes way back in 2016, I guess. They're a Skylake architecture basically. And right now it's a bit confusing because you might think that for productivity that you should go for the new Ice Lake CPUs because they have more instructions per clock, new features and uh, in some operations for the same clock the performance will be a lot better. But the problem is that clock speeds are quite low and this process, the 10 nanometer process is still at its infancy so actually we need to wait for the second generation of this new core architecture and only then we will actually see this on the higher end high core count cpus so intel correctly markets their comet like cpus for productivity and ice lake is like a gateway for ai things because their graphics part in this core architecture is actually a lot better and it's a lot larger because they changed the density of the transistors in this chip so much because of the 10 nanometers that they can create a very large uh, graphics portion and as you might know the ai kind of acceleration depends on the high parallelism it's basically a uh, matrix multiplication and for Intel processors, their integrated graphics, they work well, for example, with uh, the MXNet AI frameworks. But actually, for such things, you would actually use GPUs and uh, a lot of the software that uses artificial neural network acceleration can switch to GPUs if they are available. And usually it is CUDA acceleration that they use, for example, TensorFlow, or cafe or things like that so for now ice like is just a good architecture with bad yields and low frequencies they go up to four cores and eight threads while comet like cpus go up to six cores maybe there will be even an eight core because in the previous generation the ninth generation there actually was two eight core cpus the i9-9980HK and then the i9-9880H. Both of them were 8 cores, 16 threads, but uh, the top CPU had a turbo frequency of 5 gigahertz. And it even was unlocked, which is very interesting for a mobile CPU. So for productivity, I guess, if you want really the top performance from Intel, this is it. The ninth generation CPU would cover you the best, but at the same time, at that level, there are even laptops that integrate basically desktop CPUs. So one other thing is that we might expect the new 10 nanometer chips to be a lot better with the power consumption and battery life on laptop. But it turns out that because of that large graphics portion that you might get on the larger chips, those with the G7 uh, nomenclature, it's actually, they kind of are not that good. You can actually get better results with some of those uh, Y processors, like the i7-10510Y. But of course, if your creativity actually lies heavily on the more of a graphics kind of a element and maybe your budget does not allow a discrete graphics card you might look at some of these some of these CPUs with end with G7 but otherwise uh, only like uh, notable improvements can be seen in uh, cryptography with the 10 generation CPUs and in, in encoding for example this is a benchmark provided by PC world where we can see then if we take two four core CPUs from each generation and we compare them 
then we can see that yes in h265 encoding 10th generation does a lot better and uh, also they provided a benchmark for audio exporting using audacity and uh, again we can see very clearly that uh, these things are accelerated with 10th generation but this is four core against four core i'm pretty sure if there could be a, a six core comet like cpu or eight core comet like cpu with a high speed and uh, core count they would outperform these 10 generation chips so basically if you have to buy a workhorse specifically for creativity and you can afford six or eight cores then yes the uh, comet lake will be better but if it's out of your budget you might look into the ice like the architecture that the 10 nanometer new chip uses is called sunny co and it basically has some additional avx instructions that are quite heavy and use a lot of energy but we are still waiting for the a lot more interesting lake field kind of architecture which will imply the 3d stacking which intel has been preparing for a very long time which will start to imply a completely different way how to look at calculations which is to drastically increase the bandwidth so the actual numbers don't need to float with traces inside of the cpu on one level but they can just go down a level and down could be the actual let's say super fast cache that can hold and just fetch huge numbers in, 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 in these pipes that go through the layers. So if you have the ability to wait till Intel will sort out their 10 nanometer yield problems, then you would be rewarded with better, with a lot better CPUs. But at the same time, we are still waiting for AMD to really go into the market with their new CPUs. And I think with the absolutely fantastic power consumption that they are capable of getting with the 7 nanometers I think they would make a pretty good performing laptop so that's it for the 10 generation laptop processors from Intel let's see what uh, AMD will have to offer in a couple months